five. So they should be able to hear me. Okay. You gotta pull up what YouTube so we can see. This is YouTube. All right, guys, are we're here? We're live, I believe. All right, well, I think we're all set up. I We have everything uh, going. There she is. Okay, I think okay so we can all hear. Okay. All right. Great. All right. So tonight we are going to learn how to transfer our pattern to weaver's cloth. But before we do that, I kind of want to talk a little bit about weaver's cloth because people don't understand all the differences that there are with weaver's cloth. So I would like to go ahead and talk to you a little bit about that before we move on to transferring our pattern and how I do that to make it really simple and really precise. Okay. So this is your basic white or ivory weaver's cloth. Okay. Um, nothing special about it. It's white. It gets the job done. It's awesome. Okay, you can also purchase like mushroom colored or tan colored weaver's cloth. There's also other weaver's cloths out there if you look that are just solidly dyed. Um, same sort of thing, same weaver's cloth, looks good. What's nice to use with a colored weaver's cloth versus a white weaver's cloth is that um, where I've talked before when we did the American uh, Roots piece that if you don't punch tight or if you skip some stitches or places in your punch needle um, you can you can see it sometimes the background so that's one negative or con about using a white weaver's cloth now if you use six strands like i do most of the time and you punch really tight that's not a problem but for those that don't punch as tight or they don't like that look or whatever um, a colored weaver's cloth is a really good way to um, have a different you know to be able to not to see the background so much I guess okay so I don't know if you all are aware but there's also another option of weaver's cloth and that's hand dyed weaver's cloth so as you can see in this one it's got some modeling to it this is a hand dyed weaver's cloth um, I got this particular one in an in uh, in an Etsy shop, but um, I've also had some from the Shepherd's Needle. So Anne does sell some hand dyed weaver's cloth at the Shepherd's Needle. Why do I like that? The same reason why I like the colored is that um, if I miss a punch here and there, or I don't punch as tight as what I need to. The background doesn't really it kind of blends in more so i'm choosing this hand dyed weaver's cloth tonight because our background is going to be tea and biscuits and you can see that the tea and biscuits really does does lend well to this background of hand dyed weaver's cloth so there you go you can get some hand dyed weaver's cloth it's really not expensive any more expensive than just getting plain weaver's cloth i think that it's a the dyeing process makes it a little bit more, I don't want to say sturdy, but I feel like there's more, um, I feel like it is more sturdy, to be honest with you. So anyways, hand dyed weaver's cloth. I wanted to introduce you all to that. If you had, didn't know about it, I didn't know about it until 
I started working with Ann at the Shepherd's Needle and she, I bought some from her and then she was running low like many people were during the pandemic and I got, I found a, a, some on Etsy and I bought some off Etsy because I had really kind of fallen in love with hand dyed weaver's cloth. It comes in all colors if you're doing a black background piece. They have black weaver's cloth, they have blue weaver's cloth, yellow, you name it, they've got it. Just like hand dyed linen, they have hand dyed weaver's cloth. So, there you go. It doesn't those pictures those these are our threads for our project Bee Garden by Little House Needleworks. Doesn't that look pretty against the the weaver's cloth? That's why I chose it. Okay, so we talked about weaver's cloth and the different colors you can get. Now I'm going to talk to you about our pattern. Um, Bee Garden by Little House Needleworks. I have already punched this um, twice um, for one for me and one for a gift. And I'll have another one for a gift here after I get this one completed. And what is so nice, I might give it to you, Katie. Oh, thanks. Because she's just is purchasing a new home that is seven home seven houses away from mine and maybe I can give it to you as a welcome to your new home gift okay anyway since we've been with you Katie has graduated from college and she is working in her big big girl job and she's been gotten engaged and she's in the process of buying a home so she's a big girl all right so little house needleworks ABC are Bee Garden, I always want to say ABC Garden. Bee Garden, uh, it's a really great, easy project to punch. Um, we're going to learn how to transfer our design, and then we'll go through some basic, you know, kind of refreshers on, on what we're going to do and how we're going to punch and how we're going to go about that, okay? So the first thing I want to talk to you about is transferring our pattern to our weaver's cloth. Now then... What you could do is you could put this on a light box. I have my light box here, and it is the Easy Trace by, uh-oh, Lori Holt. Let me put it back in there so it can focus, and then I'll slowly pull it out. It is, why is it not? <laughs> why is I think it? it's because the light. Oh, the light, okay. So anyways, it is the Easy Trace by Lori Holt of being my bonnet. Um, it's a little costly, but I saved some tip money that I had gotten at work and um, I bought myself one and it's great. And we'll see that when we start tracing. Now then, like I said, what you could do is put this on your light box. Let me turn my light box on. We could turn it on our light box and we could um, tape. I always use some painter's tape. We could put some painter's tape on our light box and on our project. Put our, our piece down and start tracing. Okay? Now then, this isn't where I'm going to trace. So I'm going to show you if I would do this like this okay you can see my my piece and I would start tracing do you see how this moves even if I would tape this down this this moves when you when you trace it you, it just doesn't get taut enough so now I'm going to show you what I do to make this improve this part okay so I'm gonna put my wool mat back here I'm going to put my weaver's cloth on top of my wool mat and I'm going to get some good old uh, freezer paper Reynolds feed freezer paper there is a shiny side you can see that shiny and there is a dull side okay so what we do is we're going to put the shiny side down against our our uh, weaver's cloth we're going to take our iron this is my little iron that i use at the desk it's a steam fast you can get them on amazon okay so i've got it on uh hot not maximum but pretty hot and i'm going to just gently 
press my freezer paper onto my weaver's cloth. Now what does this do? Well, it stabilizes our weaver's cloth so that we're going to be able to draw on it. And um, it makes it very easy to transfer patterns. You can see through it and like I said, it just stabilizes it. I used to trace my patterns just like I showed you before, just, you know, straight from the paper onto my weaver's cloth. And I always would like get frustrated and make mistakes and just didn't like it. And I also do wool applique. And when I do wool applique, we use freezer paper to cut out our pieces because what does it do? It stabilizes the wool. And I thought, I wonder if you can see through that and use it to draw your patterns on. And guess what? You can. Okay, so let me turn this off so we don't burn ourselves. Okay, so now what are we going to do? I'm going to take away my, my wool mat. I'm going to put this with the freezer paper side up. Now then, you can't see this very well because it's we're in the light, but I can see through my piece, okay? So you want to center your piece. I'm going to take, again, some tape and I'm going to just tape my, my uh, weaver's cloth on the top and on the bottom, okay? That will hold it in place, so if you're moving, it won't move, all right? So just place, I taped my, again, so let's think about what we did. I have my light box, so here's my light box. On my light box, I, I taped with paint, with a paint tape, my pattern okay so my pattern is taped on there right here then on top of my pattern i have my my freezer paper covered weaver's cloth then i taped on the top and on the bottom of the weaver's it's just because everybody's on okay it's back okay guys Sorry, we dropped connection because everybody uses the internet out here in our subdivision on Friday night. So, um, I would like to, to reiterate, I made a mistake while I was talking to you. You don't put the, the freezer paper side up. So, I'm gonna, let's go over this again. So, we have our ironed on freezer paper onto our weaver's cloth, okay? Alright, so I have my light box. I have taped with paint tape the the design onto my uh, light box just to stabilize it just to hold it in place okay now then we are going to put our weaver's cloth with the freezer paper down so the weaver's cloth side up because we're working from the working side and um, we don't want to draw on our freezer paper we want to draw on our weaver's cloth so sorry that was a brain fart I apologize for that menopause is what I have to say about that. Okay, so now we're going to take our, our paint tape and we're going to tape it on the top of the weaver's cloth to the table and our other uh, free paper tape, painter's tape, we're going to put on the bottom, all right? So all that does is you can see I'm moving this and it will not move because I have my pattern tape down, I have my weaver's cloth with the freezer paper on it on the back. Now then, if you just run your fingers over this now, you will see how this, this uh, weaver's cloth does not move. It does not bubble. It does not move. That's what the beauty is of using freezer paper on the back side of your weaver's cloth when you're tracing. It stabilizes it. Okay, now then, let's talk about when we are tracing, what will we use to trace? I use a Micron pen. It's an archival ink. It's acid-free and it's permanent. That's what I use, but 
I can also use a ballpoint pen. You could use a Sharpie. You could use a pencil if you wanted to. You can use anything that you want to use and it doesn't matter because it is not going to show because this is the back side or the ugly side or the working side of your piece, okay? So what do we do? Well, we start drawing. So I always start from the outer edge and I just draw my outside edge however you want to start. It doesn't matter. You can do it however you want to. All we're doing is transferring that design onto our weaver's cloth, okay? So you can see that that's what I'm doing is just transferring this design onto our weaver's cloth. Now this design doesn't have that many you know, motifs or things in it. So this, it won't take long to do this. So I'll just go ahead and do this. And while I'm doing it, because you're going to get bored out of your gourd if you continue to watch me transfer this in silence, let's talk about, Katie will field some questions. If anybody has any questions up to this time, um, let me know. You can type them out and Katie will read them to me and I will tell you whatever I know, which might not be much. There's no questions, but what's your favorite color? My favorite color? Yeah, I'll ask you questions. Oh. <laughs> um, let's see, my favorite color. Do you know what my favorite color is? Mm, I thought it was yellow. It is yellow. I like yellow because um, I look ugly in yellow. But yellow was my grandfather's favorite color, and I loved my grandfather, as you know. And um, so yellow is my favorite color. So but I have other favorite colors, too. Is that why you like bees? I do like bees. <laughs> do I don't know that that's... Okay, so we got, a we got a question. Do you okay. do a lot of punch needle finishes down in the cave? I do. I do do a lot of punch needle finishes down in the cave. Now, some of them, most of them are not mine. Most of them, if you all travel to Little Rock, Arkansas, and you see, you go to the Shepherd's Needle, um, most of the finishing that I have done for the, well, not most, but a large portion of finishing that I have done for the Shepherd Needle has been um, punch needle projects. Okay, that was from Becky J, so thank you. The next one is from Rachel Nazarian. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Are you going to show us how to punch with two strands like the kit says? I sure am. I am going to tell. We're going to do that as soon as I get. I can't really show you until I get this all traced, but I'm getting close. And I, I'm going to show you how we're going to set up. We're going to, I'm going to show you how I set up, what I do to, to separate my floss, and what we're going to do to get the... Um, piece punched. Yes, I will be doing that. Okay, no more questions. I would like to know how many here tonight has um, finished their American Roots or a project that they chose to do with our first beginners punch needle class. Do you find the center of your weaver's cloth first before you copy the pattern? Guys, this is me. I just fly by the seat of my pants. <laughs> no, I do not. I do not. I, I'm not that fancy. I am like pig pen. If anybody remembers that joke, I am like pig pen. I just go with it. All right. So, but you could do that. The only thing that I do try to do before I trace anything is I try to make sure that the piece of cloth that I have cut is as big as what will uh, can fit comfortably with excess on my punch stand. That's it. That's really all I do. How much border do you need? Um, well, you, that's what you need. So however much will fit in your hoop comfortably. So I could have made this a lot littler, but um, I didn't obviously, but I have enough at the top and the bottom and the sides to be able to pull very tightly and get it very taut in my hoop. 
so so can you use a smaller hoop if your pattern is a little larger I'm assuming that means can you use a small hoop for a large pattern um not a I wouldn't suggest it in this because if like so for instance if we use let me get this out so if we use this one see this hoop does not accommodate all of the pattern and if you moved it um that will flatten your your loop so no i don't suggest that what i do suggest is is if you have a rug hooking frame or they do have needle punching frame it's all the same um you can move your pattern around on those so and then the next question is is do you need two frames if you're working on two separate projects or can you remove projects while you're working on them you absolutely can remove projects when you're working on them what i do is is when i get done so i'm done tracing this now so i'm going to show you what i do when i change projects out okay so i take off my painter's tape you can see now one thing that i do is i try to check have i done everything i have okay so i'm going to remove this freezer paper all you have to do is fold this up and you can use this probably five, ten more times. Okay, so when I get done to remove something from my hoop, I take it and I just roll it like this and I put it in a Ziploc bag. Why? Because that protects the loops and it, you won't get anything in it to like buy your scissors or something and to pull out the loop. So yes, that you can change and I do frequently. Okay, and then... To answer your question, Barbara Bell finished hers. Mm -hmm. RJ has the hill to finish, mm -hmm. but it's her their first punch needle and they love it. Great. Allison Corbin finished her American Roots. Awesome. Becky J has finished three projects by Not Forgotten Farms and says she's loving punch needles. I'm so glad. And then Edna Bennett finished punching roots but doesn't know how she wants to finish it. Yet. Well, that's awesome. And, you know, as we get more into this and um, people are finding that punch needle is so much fun, um, I am planning on doing more tutorials on how I finish my own personal punch needles. So, you know, keep those if you don't. But really, honestly, guys, you can finish your punch needle into any tutorial that I have for cross stitch or or needlepoint you can finish your punch needles pieces into anything that is cross stitch related okay so anything that I finish and I have a tutorial out there for cross stitch you can finish your pieces into those flat folds drums uh, ornaments pillows toppers on boxes um, lots of things and I have ideas of getting some more tutorials up there but if you follow me on Instagram and Facebook, y'all know that I have been extremely busy. I have been in, my husband and I have been remodeling my kitchen with the news that Katie is engaged now and going to move to her own home. That means that all of the furniture and things that we absorbed when she returned home from college during COVID is here. And so we're going to, we're going to, offload a lot of furniture so we've got more stuff to do i have been very busy i had a, a biopsy thank god my biopsy was negative um i had that going on we went on a family vacation uh we've been really busy haven't we katie it's been crazy it's been crazy so i know people have been wondering why i've not done floss tubes why i, why I don't have any some lady asked me about why i haven't had any tutorials lately it's simply because i am meeting myself coming and going i know everybody on the face of the earth is busy and um, i'm not saying that i'm any busier than anybody else i'm just really kind of covered up right now but you know in the future we will have more things so um was i going to say anything else that i was i answering any more questions no that was okay good. all right i can't remember okay so once we get our design transferred onto and you can see mine's not perfect but it was pretty close to what diane had put on her on her uh paper and what's nice about this guys is that once you buy this pattern you can use it over and over and over and over again like i said this is the 
uh, third time that I've punched this, so it's the third time that I've traced it. Now then, let's talk about other places that you can find punch needle um, patterns to trace yourself. Um, you can do a, a punch needle and primitive stitcher, which I contribute to every quarter, a finishing corner, a finishing tutorial in there that I do not publish. I try to choose ones that I have not published either on my blog or uh, written or video tutorials. I try to come up with something new and original. Um, I will say it's getting harder and harder because new and original, I sometimes dry up. But I try to do things that are different and um, new. And I must say that the one that I have coming out in the October issue or the fall issue is fantastic and I have not seen I've done it before but I have not done a tutorial on it before so um, I think that that will be interesting to have so anyways um, you can get really great punch needles I think that punch needle and primitive stitcher magazine gets better and better every year every magazine and they have had some fantastic uh, punch needle projects in there in the last year especially I feel like one of my favorite punch needle designers is Michelle Palmer. I ha I just love her punch needles and I have one that I'm currently working on that I'm not going to show anybody yet but it is fantastic if I do say so myself and um, Michelle is just a genius a true a true artist. Okay so we have our piece and before I put it in my hoop I want to talk to you about um, how we are going to punch this piece and how we're going to prepare ourselves to punch this piece. So again, we're doing this design. We have all, you know, you can use DMC or whatever you've chosen. I've chosen to, to punch with the classic color works pieces. Um, all the tea and biscuits here are the background and where do you find that at you find this on um, Diane's little outline here so tea and biscuits are all in the background I told Miss Ann to kit this with about seven of tea and biscuits because I stitch seven or eight tea and biscuits because I stitch very heavily I punch very tightly and I am going to punch it with two um, two strands so which I don't like to do. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like to do it. But when we're using expensive over dies or, you know, over dyed, you know, threads, I do exactly what the designer says. So um, the next thing that, so the, so the background, we'll wait on the background. What I would start if I were punching this or when I start, I'm going to do the honeycomb first. So the honeycomb and the bee, the honeycomb is done in, honeycomb believe it or not in the in honeycomb thread so right here and typically when I cross stitch I will cut this right here but you don't want to do that when you're doing punch needle you want to just take it off the card and we are going to separate it now then in our beginning uh, series I think I told you all about this little wonderful thing which is uh, I can't remember what the name of it is who does it a uh, uh, puffin and company this is a thread strip separator by puffin and company okay um, how it works is you put the end of your six strands or however many stranded floss that you have you want to put the little clip on the end and then you get it on the top and you separate it how many ever strands that you want. So for this instance, I want two. And I'm going to start holding this up. And it will turn while I hold it up and, and separate the floss. Now, I can't do this because in camera right now because I've got it really close to the camera. But here it is at the end. I'm letting it go. And there it is. Here is four strands and here is two strands. So I would pull it off. I put my two strands up here and then I would clip this again and do my two strands. So that's what I would do for my entire strain of or skein of honeycomb is I would get all 
five strands that are one yard into separate two strand lengths, okay? That's what I do. And I, do, I usually put them on my clothespin like I showed you in the beginning video. I, I typically use the clothespin on all for all of my threads. So I would write tea and biscuits or honeycomb or whatever on the clothespin, wrap it around there, and then I know that all that whole clothespin is just two strand lengths on there, okay? So I'm not going to do all of them, but that's what I would do. I would use a Puffin and Company thread separator. Okay, so I found out that Puffin and Company is no longer making these thread separators, so if you find one at a cross-stitch shop, I would definitely pick that up because she currently is not making these any longer. But how could you improvise something like this? You could get a washer, one a very heavy washer, and have your husband attach or get like a um, lobster claw clip onto the, the washer and have a clip attached to the, because they sell these kind of clips in the jewelry aisle, like at Michael's and Joann's. So you would attach like, let's say that this was the washer and you have your clip and it works the very same way. All you need is something very heavy on the end to try to hold that so you can separate the, the strands. Okay. Does everybody understand what I'm trying to say there? So you could even like do a loop kind of like a, a tie, tie a washer on the end and, and separate it that way too. Um, but that would be wasting some of your thread. So I would suggest getting a, a washer and attaching a clip either with a lobster claw or maybe your husband can like wire a, um, wire a, a lobster claw on to your washer or you can, I mean, you don't have to have your husband do it or your boyfriend, you can do it yourself. However you want to do it, I think that a washer would be a good alternative, a good cheap alternative to these Puffin and Company thread separators. But uh, honestly, if you can find these, get these. They are worth their weight in gold. Okay, so I've got two strands to get started on the, uh, the honeycomb. What else is used in the honeycomb? Let's look. I think there's two different things. Uh, I guess not. I guess that's it. Sassy Brassy. Oh, no. We're going to outline the skip, the B skip in Sassy Brassy. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to take this off and uh, do, do separate one strand of that so I can, we can do that first, okay? So let me get that. I'm not as organized as what I typically am because I have worked all this week. And I worked today, rushed home, ate supper, and came down here. So I'm just separating out two strands of Sassy Brassy. I'm gonna go ahead and get one full strand of that separated. And then we'll um, talk about, so there's one strand of Sassy Brassy. And then I'll get the other one. And can anybody tell me what needle we will be using since we are only, only punching with three strands? I mean two strands, sorry. We're punching with two strands, so what needle will we put in our punch needle? What size? We're going to use our small needle. Now then, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to load it in our lap stand or our stand or our hoop or whatever we're using. So I always just drape mine over. I try to center it in my hoop as best I can. And I open up my hoop a little bit. 
and then I'm going to place my place this on my hoop okay and then I always turn it like this and I pull on all sides okay and then I take my mighty winder and I'm going to tighten it a little bit and then I'm going to pull it some more okay then I'm going to mighty wind it this just really helps you not break your nails or hurt your wrist this and give you some torque to get it really tight Sorry for any bumping. I'm using the microphone so y'all can hear me better and I, it picks up a lot of things. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna give it a couple more twists. All right, hear that? We got it in there tight, okay? All right, so we're gonna change our needle, right? So let's get our, our um, punch needle pin out. This is an art box, an art bin, um, little cubby thing that I bought, oh, several years ago, but it is by Art Bin. You can find some Art Bin things at Michael's. Okay, so I have my um, large or my medium ne needle in here, so I'm going to take it out. So I'm going to how I'm going to do that is I'm going to just walk it back out. Okay, we always use when we have the small or the medium needle in, we use the the spring that has a pointed end. Okay, to take out our needle. This one's a large. Where did that go so I don't lose it? This one is a large. So what we do is we just twist it and take it out. Okay. Now then, very important. You take the plastic protector off your small needle and put it on your medium needle. That way it'll protect that end for to keep it sharp and, and ready to go, won't bend it or anything. And then plus you won't stab yourself. Ask me how I know. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is this little T end, we're going to put it in the, the correct way in the slot of this shaft of this needle and then twist it to the left, lefty to the left, not lefty Lucy. <laughs> Say lefty, lefty tidy. Lefty tidy. <laughs> Okay, so we've got our needle in. It won't move. We've got it in there. And then we're going to put the pointed end of our, <laughs> our spring on our needle and then kind of gently hold that so it doesn't get out and then walk it back in to your neat punch needle. That's how you change your needle. We're going to do, we are going to punch on a one. Uh, Diane says in her instructions that she punches on one, and I prefer punching on one. I like that look just because the one, the level one, makes it look more like a uh, rug hooked project, and I like that look. I like that tight nap of that, so I always punch on one. Okay. Where do you get your Mighty Winder? My Mighty Winder is purchased... But from the Shepherd's Needle, Anne has them at the Shepherd's Needle. That's she. I've a, I asked her personally to buy them and get them in the shop for me or for us. And um, she came through with that several months ago when we first started this. And I know that she keeps them in stock. So the Mighty Winder at the Shepherd's Needle. Okay, so it says in Diane's directions that. Um, we're going to start with the B-skep, okay, because that's the centermost design. We've got our small needle in. We're going to punch with two strands. We've separated, or I've separated the sassy brass and the honeycomb, 
and that's the, the floss, and we're going to do the B skip. So one skein of sassy brass is what you should have in your if you ordered from the shepherd's needle and we're going to we're going to use this for the outline of the skip and the division lines on the interior okay so since this is the outline you always go do your outlines first and then you fill in afterwards so i'm going to get two strands of my sassy brass i got it right here i've got my threader here and I'm going to go through the end of my needle all the way out to the top. Remember, um, put your card on here so that you won't lose it. You know, your card or your, however, that I discussed that in the first learning punch needle. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it through the loop of the threader. If I can hit it. can't hit it let me get my cheaters on okay right there pull it out the end get it loose from your threader then from the back side of your needle you're going to go through the little hole there in the needle right there out the front you're going to open that threader up pull the floss through the the threader and then out the back side of the needle and that is your threaded punch okay so keeping your floss on the top side and free from any screws or from your fingers or your hand leave a one to two inch length of floss out the back side of your needle we are going to let's look at the picture so we're going to outline our skip in sassy brass okay so i'm just going to start at the top of my my skip I always use my left hand to hold the fabric taut. You go down all the way to the collar of your pin. Keep everything, get my hand off of it. Then you're going to go up, go sideways with the bevel of your needle or forward with the bevel, however you prefer. I go sideways, drag it a few threads, go back down. Okay. So down drag down drag a couple threads and then back down to the collar okay Oh, sorry, I'm so sorry. Okay, so now when you get to this little house, this little house line here, um, you're going to outline this in black, so you don't want to go with sassy brass across the bottom of this. So I'm going to end here. So I'm going to pull it up and then I'm not going to clip it. I'm just going to go, well, no, I'm going to go ahead and clip it. So pull it, hold it with your fingernail, pull it straight up and clip right to the edge. Now then, I always clip this too. Now then, while we're, I'm here clipping, I want to talk to you about these, these, I found these. Actually, we sell them at the quilt shop and, um, you can find these anywhere. These are Kai Curved Nose Embroidery Scissors by Kai, K-A-I. These, my friends, are fantastic. Um, very, very lightweight, very sharp. You can get right next to the bottom. These are the best scissors that I have ever found um, to use for this. And like I said, I work at a quilt shop and these are we got some of these and I bought them and I don't think there's any left but I know that you can get these at several different places Kai K-A-I um, embroidery curved curved blade scissors okay 
just an FYI from me to you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and so we're skipping over this. We're skipping over this little bee hole here. And now we're going to continue with the rest of our outside of our skip. Now then, using two threads, that's going to make it kind of, um, you're going to have to, I feel like you're going to have to punch a little bit tighter because two threads is kind of a sparse, you know, like when we, you know, we punched the last one, or if you followed what I did, you punched it with all six strands. So, um, you know, this one's going to look a little sparse. So when you first start punching, don't think, hey, this is ugly. What's going on? I'm not doing this right. You're doing it right. Just, just stay the course. Another thing that I did on mine that I think I'm going to do with this and this one again is that I did the outside of the B skip with two rows of sassy brass. And I believe that I'm going to do that again. I kind of like to... I kind of looked like the look that it gave my first one. And um, so I'm going to do that again because I kind of like, the, I like Sassy Brass by Crescent Colors is one of my favorite gold colors. I think that it's, I just think it's pretty. RJ asked, is it ever okay to not cut off the thread and travel it to the next spot? Yeah, you can do that. And I do it all the time. Um, I am less likely to do that typically with um, uh, over dyed floss just because it's a little bit more expensive. But yes, you absolutely can. And I think I did share that in my starting videos that you can jump, travel, jump, and I will, um, I'll show you how to do that right now. Okay, so. So I punched the whole length of Sassy Brass. Now I'm going to load up another one, okay? So again, you go through the bottom of your needle to out the top. You're going to put the end of the floss through the threader. Pull it through the bottom. I didn't get it. Okay, then once it comes out the bottom of the needle, you're going to go from the back side to the front side. And then out the back. Okay. All right, so now then. I'm going to do another row around here, but I want to show, like since RJ asked about the skip method, I want to show you what that is. So again, you can punch from the side to side. That's how I typically punch. You can punch front however you want. You just can't punch back, okay? Bunch behind, you know, going backwards. So with the bevel edge, I'm going to punch from side to side. I'm going to start here, and I'm going to go do this whole line. Okay, so now then, I got to the end of this row. Okay, so the next line is right here. How am I going to skip that? So what I do is you want to put your fingernail right down to where the bevel is. Pull it out enough to skip it. So you're going to leave this, and you're going to punch this row. And that is a very acceptable way to travel on your punch needle as you're punching. Okay, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to go to the next line. Now, do you waste thread? You probably do waste a little thread, but I don't know that you waste any more than what you would do if you clip it. Um, you know, that's all kind of your own determination, what you'd like to do. I... Um, I, 
I do the travel this quite frequently if I have short distances. Now remember, as you punch, you want it just, you get into a rhythm, go all the way, punch all the way down to your collar, okay? So I'm travel. And let's say that you're going along and it's like, oh no, I pulled it up and there it is. What do I do? Well, you're just going to hold this from the back and push it all the way back down. Pull this thread up here till it's even with the bottom of the fabric like this. Your needle's right next to it and then just start, keep on punching. Punch needle is very forgiving. The thing is, is I heard from several people that um, took the last class that they tried it and they didn't like it. And I feel kind of guilty about that because I feel like maybe I didn't do a good enough job of, you know, saying, you know, don't sweat it. Just, just punch, you know. The first thing that you do is never going to be beautiful. Was the first cross stitch that you did beautiful? Mine sure wasn't. It was passable, but it wasn't beautiful. Okay, so I ran out of floss. Now what do we do with these skip things? I want to highly, highly, highly um, recommend that you clip everything. So you just want to, again, take your scissors and clip right at the bottom of all those travel loops, okay? That's it. That's how you travel. Okay, all right, so You're going to look, I know you're going to look how your, how yours looks and see mine doesn't look that great either, but as you fill in, these will start looking great and, um, they'll be, they'll be great. And, and honestly they will don't sweat the small stuff. Okay. So I feel like I've touched on everything that we need to know. I told you about the Kai scissors. I told you about the mighty winder. Um, again, Kai scissors can be found anywhere. I don't know if Miss Ann has them at the Shepherd's Needle or not. You might ask her. She, I'm certain she can get them. Um, I got mine at my quilt shop, but we're out of them. Uh, the Mighty Winder at the Shepherd's Needle, again, uh, this is something that I cannot do without. Ever since I have started using it, I can't do it. I have hand and wrist and arm issues and fantastic. We're going to do, use the small, since we're doing only two threads, we're going to use the small needle. Again, let me stress that when you are done punching, always park your needle. So, you know, so that I always say park it in the garage so that it doesn't come out and it doesn't, you know, dull the needle, damage the needle or hurt you. So that's all I can tell you tonight, guys. Is there any questions? Does anybody have any questions that they would like me to answer? Any questions? A light box. Also, I want to say too that I have this Lori Holt light box. It's like 150 bucks. Um, I trace a lot of things though. I do wool applique. I do hand embroidery. I do punch needles. So um, I had used subpar ones. And when I talk subpar, I mean like the ones that you get on Amazon. I bought three of those in the past, and each time I was not, I was kind of not happy with them so um you can use it just on the window just tape your pattern on the window and then your fabric on the window to trace i really really highly encourage you to get freezer paper not wax paper freezer paper though um that is like that tip is like gold if you can it really does stabilize everything Okay, how do you get the back of satin stitch on the skip? How do you get the look of satin stitch on the skip? On the back side, Rachel? Are you talking about the back side? Do you only stop when the thread runs out? Yes, you only stop, Catherine, when the thread runs out or your piece is all colored in. Then you would stop. Uh, let's see. 
anything else that the satin stitch does she mean like the back side get that pattern that piece right there okay so this is let me put this away now let me um this is a project that i'm currently working on it's a whip and um you can see how this looks this is the working side okay so it's all flat i always trim all my extra pieces and then uh then this is what it looks on the front side so um all smooth it's not there's no no jumps or bumps so rachel said no the photo shows a nice straight stitch it's not it's punch needle rachel um she just went back and forth like I did, like I showed you. It'll look better when you're done. When you're done, it'll look better. This is just the outline. That's what people think. I, I mean, I again want to reiterate that when I start, so look at this. See up here? This isn't pretty. You know, this none of this is pretty, but it will be pretty after I get it all filled in. Patience. Everybody has to have patience to um, to get these these the way it should be you know i mean you're not going to see beauty until it's all filled in okay so when i started out this all looked ugly up here in this this was all looks ugly but when i as i fill in it gets better and better and better to where it looks like this now how it looks like this all smooth is that i stitch very tightly back and forth very tightly so the next question is there any difference in stapled to a frame versus a hoop what when what does it say is there any difference in stapled to a frame versus a hoop if you can get it stapled to a frame and very very tight no what is the um the benefit of a hoop is is that you can when you're going to get this is going to loosen this is going to loosen as you punch so every day you can make it tighter if you have it stapled to a frame you have to take the staples out and then restaple it to make it tighter so um, any any punch needle person class or anything that i've ever watched or taken um, always suggest a um, a hoop or a rug hooking um, stand so with the little gripper bars on the four sides or in the round. Okay, the next question is, what do you do when you pull the thread out and its tip won't hold the floss? What do you do when you pull the thread out and its tip won't, it tick, but I think tick it won't tip. hold the floss? So the, the, the fact... The, when you're, I guess, threading your needle... Do you mean like when you're pulling the thread out from your, from the, the it won't, the fabric won't hold the, the floss? Um, if that's the case, you're holding on, you're hitting it somewhere, it's, it's catching on something, you don't have a large enough needle, or you've not gone all the way down to the collar. Either you're like holding, you're, you're touch somewhere the, the floss is getting held. If I'm going along and the fabric's not holding the floss, I'm either touching the floss with my hand and I don't realize it it's caught on a on a on a screw it's hanging off the side and pulling here that's you've got tension somewhere on your floss and that's why it's not being held I think that's what you mean if that's not what you mean um, please clarify because I don't understand exactly what you're saying and then um, the next question do you have other YouTube videos that teach you how to do this punch needle and we have other you you have other YouTube videos that show how to punch needle, but not the B. Not the B. I have other punch needle. I have like I don't know six. Or, just go to my. First of all, everybody needs to subscribe to my to my YouTube channel. And then second of all, you need to look. I every when I have like a finishing video or a cave tail video, they all have the same um, thumb picture. And so the punch needle says punch needle, and it has a picture of a punch needle on it. So I have several punch needle videos that go over the basics that tell you exactly how to do. I feel like I did that tonight, didn't I? Yeah. Just just go like and subscribe and. 
look at the rest of your videos. They can all be found on your wall. That's the easiest way to see when she comes out with a new punch needle video is if you're subscribed and it'll pop up on your news feed. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, anything um, else? Doesn't look like we have any other questions for tonight. Okay, so what I'm going to tell you to do is, guys, is just be patient. This is If this is one of your first punch needle projects, be patient. Um, you're going to get it to look great as you work on it. Uh, mine doesn't look great now sometimes, and I've been punching for years. You just have to be patient, fill in. Don't just go pump, pump. Don't think that you can just go do, 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 all the way around and it's going to look great. I'm going to tell you right here. I've been punching for years, and I punched this today at work, and look right here. That sucks right through there. I did not do a good job, and I'm going to have to pull that out and do it again or punch in between. I'll probably have to punch in between the rolls. Even if I would punch, you know, right next to these, I'm not going to get them tight the way I like them. And that's because the phone was ringing and customers were coming in and I'd start and stop. Once you start, set down and you kind of get in a rhythm, um, it's much easier. If you start and stop a lot of times, it's harder to get, or I find it harder to get into the rhythm. Okay, so yeah. just, just be you know, I'm willing to help you in any way that I can help you. Look at all my videos. Um, bring your questions. I'm going to try to do a punch party, a punch needle party. So where you bring your punch needles that you're working on, we'll do it live. I'll punch. And while I'm punching, Katie or me or somebody, well, maybe my husband, if Katie's not here, <laughs> will field questions and I'll answer it, okay? Um, I'm not going to promise that th that's going to happen next Friday because, like I said, I am... I'm, I'm really, really just extremely busy, but I'm going to try because I want people to understand that this is really a great craft. It really, really is. I'm not the world's greatest punch needle person, but I can tell you I'm a really good teacher. I, I was a double major in school with science and um, high school, uh, secondary education, so I was going to be a science teacher for middle school and high school. I didn't end up doing that, but I have um, teaching experience and I, I'm, I'm good at, at trying to verbalize and show people what to do. So um, if there's anything else that you guys need right now. The last question is, do you need to wrap the twill tape on a hoop for punch needle like with cross stitch? No. You don't want it because you, we don't care about the hoop marks. We want the, if you put twill tape on, what that's going to do is not allow the piece to be held. Only thing that twill tape does for a cross stitch hoop is to allow um, the linen to be held a little bit tighter. But the main thing is, is that it causes it helps you not to have hoop marks. We want the the weaver's cloth to be taut, and we want hoop marks, okay? Because we're not going to, this outside here, we're not going to finish that into anything because we only finish up to the punch needle. So no, no twill tape, none at all, no. Anything else? All right, guys, I thank you so much for coming and joining me. I truly do. I thank you for uh, following me on Instagram and um, following me here on YouTube. I truly appreciate it. I thank you for all your friendship and your support. Um, go out there and be kind to everybody. The world is hurting and let's all be happy to each other and kind to each other. Okay. Thank you so much. Get to punching. Um, look for if I'm my announcement, if I'm can follow through with the punch party next Friday. Um, it'll be live. We can ask our questions and just have fun and hang out, okay? So until the next time, thanks so much. Love y'all. Bye-bye.